Witchcraft is just as real as the anointing is, people. Don't think that it's not nothing to play around with. It's just as real. It's just as dangerous and it's just as powerful as the real anointing is. And witchcraft is something that I believe that we need to be educated in, that we need to learn about, that we need to know about. We need to be instructed in these things because the Bible tells us that we should not be ignorant of the devil's devices. And I want to tell you something, that many times you'll be sitting in a church or you'll be going someplace and all of a sudden the anointing will just hit you, right? Witchcraft can work the same way. You could be driving in your car, you could be at home, any place, and all of a sudden that anointing of demonic power will just come right upon you and, and seek to oppress you, seek to harass you, and seek to rob you of God's blessings. So what we're going to do tonight, and these messages to follow, we're going to teach about witchcraft. And what we're going to do in every one of these messages, hope we're going to destroy the power of witchcraft in people's lives. Witchcraft is a real demonic power that we need to be aware of, and that we need to understand that it is, that, that, that it is the, again, the counterfeit, the counterpart of the anointing and of the power of God. So just as the anointing of spirit seeks to, seeks to uh, you know, uh, manifest the kingdom of God on the earth, just as the anointing would want to demonstrate God's love, God's mercy, God's power, that witchcraft does exactly the opposite. Witchcraft is the power that the devil uses to manifest his kingdom on the earth. Amen. Okay? Just as the anointing is demonstrated through the kingdom of God on earth, witchcraft is used by the devil to manifest his devilish power. And I want to say to you something. No Christian, no Christian is oblivious to the power of witchcraft. Just because you got saved... And just because you know the Holy Spirit and got baptized in spoken tongues, and just because you're, you're a spirit-filled Christian, does not mean that witchcraft cannot attack you. And what we're going to do in these messages, just like I said, we're going to destroy it. We're going to arm you with a weapon and let you become aware of how witchcraft works, what witchcraft wants to do, and that every time witchcraft is seeking to attack you, you will be armed with the anointing of God to counteract that demonic power. And I want to say to you something. Many Christians get attacked with witchcraft and they don't even know that it's witchcraft. Mm. They don't even know what's going on. Yeah. Now witchcraft is a very, very broad term. It brings, it, 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 it brings in, it's a very, very wide range. That's why when I say witchcraft is the counterfeit for the power of God, therefore it takes in a wide, wide range. Okay? And I'm going to go through some verses of Scripture tonight. We're going to really give some definition to what witchcraft is in the Word of God tonight. Okay? And when you take a look at it in the Word of God, witchcraft, by definition, by definition, is the domination, the manipulation, and the control of people's lives through the utilizing of evil spirits. Let me say that again. It is the domination the control, okay, and the influence that the devil has over people's lives to make them do something, to make them be controlled by another spirit other than God. See, God's Holy Spirit is very free. He gives you a freedom to act and choose as you want to do. You have a freedom when you serve the Spirit of when you serve the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost gives you a choice. He will never push himself on you. He will never force himself on you. He's a very loving God. Therefore, his, his ways are not to put fear into you, to make you want to do something. His way is not to push you to do something. His way is not to force you to do something that you don't want to do. If you don't feel in your heart to do it, then the Holy Spirit will never seek to control you outside of your own personal will. Is that clear? He will never seek to dominate your will and make you do something that you don't want to do. But you see, the devil is the complete opposite. The devil would like to use a demonic power to control you and to make you do things that you really are as against your own will. He would really want to manipulate you and influence you and put you in a corner where you've got no other choice but to just be controlled by this demonic oppression. That's what he would want to do, and that's called witchcraft. Mm -hmm. So the reason why the witchcraft takes in such a broad range for us because it, it, it just speaks about 
people's lives being controlled by another spirit other than the spirit of God. And if you find yourself being manipulated, being influenced, just being influenced, like you ever feel like as though you have to do this and there's no way out of it? Like, like you wish there was a way out of it, but there's no way out of it. It's like you're being pushed into it. That's witchcraft. Okay? If you're being dominated in any way, and you're seeking to do things that you really don't want to do, or you're being controlled in your mind, in your thinking, that's all witchcraft. Okay? Making you do something that you don't really want to do. That's witchcraft. Even Paul felt a little bit of this. When he says, the thing that I would not, I do. And the thing that I don't want to do, I find myself doing. He, he, Paul calls it a law of sin and death, but underneath it all, there's a demonic power that is at work there, and that is called witchcraft. Okay? So witchcraft is, a, is any other spirit that coerces you, that puts you in a position where you've got to do nothing else except to be forced into this predicament. Okay? And witchcraft would want to control your will, control your mind, control your emotions, to the extent that you have no more, no more control over anything you do. Now the Holy Spirit is completely the opposite. The Holy Spirit gently speaks to you, gently woos you, and it draws you to make you want to do it. You want to come to church. You want to read the Word of God. You want to witness. You, you want to do it. But the devil is completely the opposite. He will throw guilt on you, condemnation on you. He will throw all kinds of things on you to make you do something that you don't really want to do. And you ever been tempted sometimes? I'm sure you have. And you find yourself just being driven to do what you've been tempted with. That's witchcraft at work. You ever find yourself in a situation and say, now th this just isn't me. I normally don't do something like this. What would make me do this thing just now? I, I hate doing it. And I don't really want to do it. Now why am I doing it for? That's because witchcraft is at work. There's a demonic force that is at work that it seeks to stop you to do the will of God. Now let me tell you something right now. That with every step you take in the kingdom, with everything that you do for God, there will be a proportionate attack up upon your life by the devil. Mm -hmm. The blows of the enemy against you, what the enemy seeks to do against you, and this is, this, this is something that you really need to understand, whenever the enemy is, is, is seeking to undermine you and throwing witchcraft at you, is because that attack, is proportionate to the damage that you've already done to him. Okay? Whatever damage you've done to him, the blows that you will sustain will be proportionate to the doubt that you've done to him. That's called backlash. That's got a name. It's called backlash. So this is nothing to fool around with, and it's very, very serious, people. It, is, it, it literally is a demonic anointing. That's really what you can call it. It is exactly the opposite of the anointing. Counterfeited, counterparted to the exact T, right down to the last dime. Okay? Now, uh, I'm going to give you some symptoms about what, what, how witchcraft works. I'll give you about four or five symptoms when you know you're being placed in a position that you're being controlled, you're being manipulated, you're being influenced by another spirit other than the Spirit of God. And do you know, Christian, that God only wants us to be controlled by His Holy Spirit. Yeah. He doesn't want us to be controlled or manipulated or influenced or driven by any other spirit except His Holy Spirit. And if anything is driving you, compelling you to do something that is out of your own nature, out of your own Christian nature, that's witchcraft. Like, let's say you find yourself falling into sin tonight, after you get out of here. And you look and you feel guilty, you say, I, you know, I wish I never did it. There could be a problem there that you're not yielding to God. But underneath it all, there is a current of demonic force that is always at work. Please understand that. And whatever you do that is displeasing to God, yes, you may have been responsible for what you did. But there's always an underlying current of demonic power that is at work. You see, and if you cut that demonic root off, you cut that demonic power off, and you're going to be more free to...
to make a free choice as to not do the thing when the thing finally comes to you. Amen. You see? You cut the power of witchcraft and when you're tempted to do something, you won't be, more, you won't be, as, you won't be as bound to want to be driven to do something that you normally wouldn't do out of your own nature. Huh? You ever take a look and say, you know, I, I know I could have, didn't have to do that, but yet I did it. That was witchcraft that was at work. That was a demonic force that was at work. And you, take, you, you, you step back and say, you know, how in the world did I ever get into that? That's just against me. And you cry before the Lord and you cry out for forgiveness and you ask the Lord to help you. And yeah, you may have done it. I'm not taking the responsibility away from what you did. But I'm saying underneath it all, there is, a, there is a working of witchcraft, a working of manipulation and control and influence that's at work that seeks to drive you to do that which the devil would want you to do. Drive you away from God. divination, some of the most common things. Psychic reading, like these psychic channels on the, on the television, that's all divination. That can fall under the category of divination. Remember, divination speaks about a, another spirit that's speaking. Making it sound like it's God, too. The psychic readers, everybody thinks it's God talking. It's not God talking, it's a demon spirit talking. And that the, the reason why the demons talk for is their uh, ultimate their, their, their ultimate uh, ulterior is to control your life, to manipulate you, to influence you, to dominate you. Okay? Here are some other things that fall into the category specifically of divination. Handwriting analysis, fortune telling, astrology, horoscope reading. Every time you open up those stupid papers and read the stupid horoscope, you're throwing a curse on yourself. That's why I don't allow the newspapers, and you notice something? All the newspapers carry the horoscope. That's why I don't allow the newspapers around me, because you know why? Because when you pick up that newspaper, the devil is clearly telling you, it's another spirit speaking to you right now. When you open up that newspaper, you are allowing another spirit to, uh, to speak to you other than the spirit of God. That's called divination. And if you listen to that spirit long enough, it will control every decision that you make for God. Did you hear me? This is how spirits of deception come in. The devil will actually convince you. This is divination. This is how divination works. Because people are hearing other spirits. Will so cloak itself to make it sound like God. That's why divination, the word divination comes from the word divine. Divine, divination. D-I-V-I-N-E, divine. Divination, D-I-V-I-N-A-T-I-O-N. It's the same word. Meaning that it wants to make you think that it's God talking. I had one person come to me and say, well, I don't believe I, I belong in the church anymore because it's not the season for me to be in this church. And even though I'm fed, even though I enjoy being in the church, even though I enjoy getting fed, I don't believe it's the time for me. That's the spirit of divination that was at work. That's witchcraft. Controlling you, manipulating you to do something that is not really in your spirit to want to do. You see that? Okay, let me give you some other, some other examples of witchcraft. Crystal ball reading, palm reading, tea leaf reading, tarot card reading. How about this common one? Praying to statues, praying to Madonnas. It falls under the category of necromancy, praying to the dead. That's obviously what Saul was doing here. That's why, that's why God gave him that verse of Scripture. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. 
Because at this particular point, if you read the whole context of it, it's right here that he decided to call up a familiar spirit out of the ground and, and listen to another spirit other than God, didn't he? And God immediately says, for rebellion, this has a sin of witchcraft. What is he saying to Saul was this. Saul, you're rebelling because you are refusing to listen to what I have to say to you on the matter. But rather, you're going to another spirit to listen to what they have to say. And I tell you that every time we hear another spirit other than God, and go to count, I mean, Saul actually went to counsel to another spirit. And because he was listening to another spirit, that's, that's what called, that is what's called divination. Okay? I'll turn to Galatians chapter 5. Let me give you the next word that's used for witchcraft. Galatians chapter 5. So that particular form of witchcraft, Quisem, 7081, specifically means divination. It means giving heed to another spirit other than the spirit of God. And notice that all these things like handwriting analysis, fortune telling, psychic reading, astrology, they are, they are all devices that the devil uses to make you hear another spirit. The Ouija board is divination. Okay? You put your hand on that little thing there and that little thing turns and tells you exactly what you're supposed to do and you actually, lit. that's all divination. That is the force of divination at work. Galatians chapter 5. Now look at this, the next word that's used. And I will go into divination later on, another message. Because Paul was confronted with a spirit of divination in one of his evangelistic encounters. And when you take a look at that spirit of divination, it was literally called a spirit of python. I'll get into that in another message. You come back later. Paul had an encounter with it and was called, literally called the spirit of python. You know what a python is? It's the largest snake in the world. Let me not give it away. Look at Galatians chapter 5, please. So I'm saving that for another message. That's going to be a good one. Don't miss that one. Please don't miss that one on python. But that's all divination. See, it's like listening to another spirit. Do you actually know that they actually had these temples in Greece and in Rome? the prostitution temples where people would actually go into the temples men and women would actually go into the temples and out, right out in the open have intercourse with one of the priests or the priestesses of the temple right in front of the demon god right out in the open, plain daylight and it was like a custom to do this to go into any temple and to, they were called temple prostitutes they could be male or they could be females you could go in and just have all the, all the sex you want. But the thing was, is that the sexual act wasn't the, the main issue in those temples. The main issue was, was that in the act of the intercourse, another spirit would take over the person or the priest or the priestess of that temple and would begin to prophesy to you as you're in the very act of the intercourse itself. Isn't that nice? So, so it wasn't just a prostitution hall. The purpose of going there was to, was to actually engage in the act for the purpose of having another spirit take over the priest or the priestesses of the one that you were engaging the act with so they could prophesy to you and bless you as to concerning what the gods were saying on behalf of your life. So here's uh, some blow Joe, uh, you know, out there in the Roman Empire and he wanted to uh, get ahead. And he wanted some form of, he wanted to find out what God's will was for his life. He would go in the temple, 5 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock at night, maybe before he went back to dinner that night. He would walk into the temple and say, uh, he picked maybe one of, the, one of the beautiful priestesses in the temple and say, uh, you know, uh, I, need a, I need a word from God. And they would encounter upon the sexual act right, right on the altar, right in front of everybody, right on the altar. And as they were doing it, a demon spirit would enter into the woman and begin to speak to that man and say, yes, the gods have favored you. The gods will do this. The gods will do that. Right in the midst of the act. That's all called divination. That's exactly what happens today when you pick up your psychic reading, your tarot cards. It's exactly the same method, isn't it? It's hearing another spirit other than the spirit of God. And letting that spirit control you, run your life, 
and make decisions for you. You know how many people open up the horoscope every day and decide what their day is going to be like according to the horoscope? That's divination. Something telling you what to do. Controlling your life, controlling your future, controlling your decisions as to what the events are going to be or the outcome of it by listening to another spirit. That's why God hates it. Look at Galatians chapter 5. Look at verse 20. Second form of witchcraft. Look at, well, let's think of verse 19. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. So you see, it's, it's literally a demonic power. And what you should watch out for is that when things happen out of the unusual, when things happen out of the unusual, it's probably witchcraft that's at work. For example, I'll give you one example. About in March, all our equipment started to break. All of it. The computer broke down, the monitor broke down, the VCR broke down. I had three VCRs break down in one, within the matter of about three or, four, three or four days. Matter of fact, the same day. That was witchcraft that was at work. I'm using that example to let you see that when you see things just happening, one right after the other, the car breaks down, you go to your job, your job is yelling at you, you come home, you're having problems with your kids, everything is just like working against you. That's all witchcraft that's at work. And it's all designed to stop you from doing what you're about to do for God. Please understand that. Those kind of attacks are specifically designed to stop you from doing what God has planned for you to do. So when you get attacked, rejoice. Amen. Know that fully well that God is about to do something great in your life and you're about to probably uh, take the next step in your anointing or in your ministry and the devil is just there to want to stop it. He'll just be there to try to stop this way. He'll just break everything down and do whatever he can do to try to stop the work of God in your life. Now look at this, Galatians chapter 5 verse 19. You know, all of the wicked prayers that are being sent against Christians is all falls under the category of divination. Let's take a look at this, verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft. Now this particular word, witchcraft, found in the book of Galatians, is the Greek word pharmakia. Can you say that word with me? Pharmakia. Yeah. Alright, and that word pharmakia literally means sorcery. Now in the book of 1 Samuel that we just read, when we read witchcraft, that meant divination. Here, when we read the word witchcraft, it doesn't mean divination, it means sorcery. Now I want you to know, they're all tied in together, one form or another. We're just trying tonight just to give some distinction to it. But specifically, when you look at this word here for witchcraft, it doesn't just mean divination. It not, doesn't that have the meaning of divination. But it specifically means sorcery. Pharmakia. We get the English word pharmacy from it. So pharmakia encounters and it, it, it takes in the whole aspect of drugs. Any type of drugs. Oh boy, we can go into this now. And we'll go into it a little bit later. Drugs. If you have got to take a drug to keep you healed, that's sorcery. Mm -hmm. A lot of the medicine that's being done today comes under the category of sorcery. It's pharmacy. It's controlling somebody's body through the usage of, of drugs. Controlling your body through the usage of how many pills you can pop a day. You see. Now, sorcery doesn't necessarily can have to got to do with anything that you hear. It's got to do with all the drugs you throw inside of your body to control your body to act a certain way. And you know, you pop enough drugs into that body of yours, and that body will do a lot of strange things. And you put some of that drugs inside, it make you feel like a Superman. Make you feel like you can take on the whole world. People do crazy things when they're the influence of drugs. But you know what I found out also? That sorcery also takes in the whole aspect of fetishes, charms, amulets, bracelets, 
rings and earrings. That all falls under sorcery too. Because it somehow is connected to being like a drug on the body. I'll get into that in a, in a, maybe if I have time today, I'll get into it. Because God, the Holy Spirit tells us, don't bring any cursed object into your home because you'll be a curse like it. That is sorcery. That falls under the category of sorcery. All right, uh, lucky charms, rabbit's foots, that all falls under the category of sorcery. And you've got to be very, very careful as to what you bring into your house and what you buy. Because much of it can be witchcraft, sorcery. Okay? But here's one that I really wanted to get into tonight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take some time with this. And then maybe later on I can get back to the sorcery thing with the, with, the, with the accursed objects. Okay? But here's one, Second Chronicles chapter 33. And this specific word me literally means magic. Second Chronicles chapter 33. Second Chronicles chapter 33. Second Chronicles chapter 33 and verse 6. Now the word witchcraft is going to be found in this verse and it's a different Hebrew word. Okay? The Hebrew word is different than the Hebrew word that we just read in 1 Samuel, excuse me, chapter 15 verse 23 in Galatians chapter 5. Look at this. And he caused his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hittim and he observed times and used enchantments, that's all divination, and used witchcraft, and dealt with familiar spirits and with wizards. He wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Now you see that word witchcraft there? It's the Greek, the Hebrew word kasapha, K-A-S-H-A-P-H. It's number 3784 in your Strong's Concordance. And it's different from the words the verse that we just read in 1 Samuel that says rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. This word witchcraft here is a different word. It probably turned over. That was the, probably the click that you heard. Just check that please, Jennifer. It's a, different, it's a different word that's used that we just read. Kasafa. And it literally means to whisper a spell or to practice magic to practice magic. Now notice the other two words I gave you so far. The other two words that I start off with was divination. The second one was sorcery, pharmakia. But this word here, kasafi, is a, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, it's a different word completely. It literally means magic. So you can see that witchcraft takes in this whole broad category of divination, sorcery, and magic. Now what's magic? Magic, I wanted to start here tonight because magic is probably the most powerful out of divination and sorcery. I'd have to say magic is the worst. You know, they got black magic and white magic. Now the magic that it's speaking about here is not the silly little magic tricks that you, you, you know, you find that the clowns do at Madison Square Garden. Okay? You know. And that's usually how we think about magic. Oh, you're going to do a magic trick for me now? You know, like maybe pull a rabbit out of the hat or do something, you know, uh, uh, do some crazy thing, I don't know. To entertain me, you're going to do a magic trick? And watch out some of those magic shows you do watch on the show, because it's all witchcraft. Yeah. All of it. They're actually putting witchcraft right on the show for you, and you're actually seeing the forces, the demonic forces actually doing the thing right in front of you. Now what makes you, th what makes a person look at a spoon and be able to bend the spoon with their mind? You know what that's called? That's called divination. That's magic. That's a form of witchcraft. But it specifically falls into the category of divination. Why? Because divination, that guy is listening to another spirit and he's communicating with another spirit and the spirit, he's telling that other spirit to bend that spoon. See, demons like to communicate with each other. And usually if you have a stronger demon inside of you than a demon outside, then you can probably command the demon on the outside to move objects and material things. And that's how they're able to bend spoons. Because the demon spirit that's inside of them is much stronger than the demon spirit that's surrounding them. 
they were actually able to project a force and a wicked power to actually bend the spoon. That is called witchcraft. Sword swallowers, that's witchcraft. If these people do these unusual feats, it's all witchcraft. There's all a demonic force that's at work giving these people the power to do these things, people. Don't be deceived by it. But this thing specifically means magic. Now, when I took a look at magic, magic is specifically a working of witchcraft that causes things to happen that should not be happening. Magic is associated with the forces inside of nature. That's why whenever you see the witches worshipping, they're always worshipping around trees, outside in the, and outside in the forest, greenery, you're always surrounding them. They're always doing their, 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 uh, you know, their rituals out, out in the field someplace. Because witchcraft has got to do with calling up the forces of nature within the earth and somehow manipulating the forces that are within the universe itself. So the witches actually believe that within the earth there are spirits. Within everything, with anything that has force, within anything that has power to it, there is a spirit behind it. So like for example, the four seasons of the earth, they believe that the thing that literally gives force to the seasons is a spirit. That's why they worship around the seasons for. Okay? But magic is specifically designated to this form of witchcraft that causes things to happen that shouldn't be happening. To somehow manipulate the force of nature itself and to cause something to happen in your life that normally would not be happening or normally should not be happening. Like people dying before their time. People getting sick, and there's no reason for them to get sick. People just dying in accidents and tragedies, just happening just like that. Without no warning, without nothing happening. That's all the working of witchcraft, and it can be attached to as being the working of magic. Somewhere, somehow, someone sent a demonic force for, to ha make something happen that shouldn't have been happening. That's why you, you, so you see some Christians, they backslide, that's witchcraft, but can also, that's also magic that's at work. Making a person do something that they normally wouldn't want to do, and making the thing happen that was totally against God's will. That's magic. Okay? People dying before the time. It was never God's intention for that to happen, but there was a force of magic that was at work that was making that thing happen. People get sick. They don't know why they get sick for. That's magic that's at work. That's a demonic force that's at work. You just get sick for no reason at all. You don't know where, where in the world this sickness is coming from. You don't know where this disease is coming from. Most likely the first one that I would pick is the devil. And that is magic. Making something happen that should not be happening in God's will. Magic. Take a look at this in Ezekiel chapter 13. You say, well, I'm a Christian. That can't happen to me. Nonsense. Because the further on you go in God, the more these, are, just like I said to you, the stronger this force is going to want to be. To want to stop you from doing what God wants you to do. Ezekiel chapter 13. Huh? You ever find out? You just got through winning a soul, praying, you just wrought some great victory in your life. And all of a sudden you go to the doctor and the doctor gives you a bad report about some sickness in your body. I'll tell you what that is. That's all witchcraft and it's magic that's at work making that happen. Ezekiel chapter, chapter 13. Our God is saying that he doesn't want anything to happen in your life that is not of his will. Amen. And if something is happening in your life that is not of your will, rebuke it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because this is magic that's at work, witchcraft, demonic forces. Lord. Wanting to make something happen that should not be happening. Hmm. Untimely deaths should not have happened. People that backslide should not happen. Mm -hmm. Broken marriages. Divorces that happen in a home should not be happening. Shouldn't be happening. 
There's no reason why the two people that fell in love get divorced. That's all magic that's at work. That's all witchcraft. Look at this in Ezekiel chapter 13, please. Verse 17. Ezekiel chapter 13 and verse 17. Likewise, the Son of Man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people which prophesy out of their own heart and prophesy thou against them. Notice that. They prophesy out of their own heart. What does that mean? That means divination. Am I teaching you something tonight? You know, Jesus spoke about divination. He says, pray not with repetition. You know what he was saying? He was saying, don't use what the witches do to pray. Because to pray with repetition is to chant. And do you know that all the voodoo workers chant? Anybody that prays religiously and calls demons up, they always chant. And Jesus said, don't pray repetitiously. That falls under the subject, the category of divination. You see how this, this, this works right in? Look at that, read the rest of this in verse 18. And say, thus saith the Lord God, Woe to the woman that so pillows to all armholes. Now, he was not speaking about the pillow that you fall asleep on. Okay? That's verse Ezekiel 13 and verse 18. Ezekiel 13 and verse 18. Woe to the woman that so pillows. Now, the pillows that he was speaking about were the amulets and the charms that these women were making and using them to control people's lives. Can I say that again? The pillows were actually amulets. The correct version of that word is amulets. So they have to do with charms and fetishes and, and, and pieces of jewelry that these women were actually making and they were actually invoking demon spirits to go into the jewelry to control people's lives. Let's read the rest of this. Woe to the woman that sold pillows to all harm holes and make kerchiefs upon the head of every statue to hunt souls. Do you see what magic does? Magic will hunt your soul. Read the rest of it. Will you hunt the souls of my people? Notice the souls that are being hunted here. Not the souls of the unbeliever. Not the souls of the wicked. Not the souls of the unsaved. The souls of God's people are being hunted here. You see that? Not the souls of somebody else. It says, will you hunt the souls of my people? Meaning God's people are being hunted. Or else you think witchcraft would want to do its work. The most dirtiest work is in the church. It's because if he can stop the church from ever progressing and use magic on the church, then he can cause the church to not ever accomplish the will of God on the earth. So he'll make something happen in the church that shouldn't be happening. That's witchcraft. That's magic. Look at this. Will you hunt the souls of my people? And will you save the souls alive that come unto you? And will you pollute me with among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread to slay the souls that they should not die? Read this, please. Look at in verse 19. To slay the souls that should not die. You see that? What it's saying there? It's saying these people that should not die, they're being slayed because of magic that's at work. Hmm. You see that? Yeah. To slay the souls that should not die. And look at this. And to save the souls alive that should not live. That means that there are certain people that should not be alive at all. They should be dead and yet they're still alive. And it's magic that's working on them. Living zombies, and they are living zombies. There are some people that are headed for judgment and destruction that should have been dead a long time ago. And it's the power of magic that's keeping them alive. Hello. Wherefore, in verse 20, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against your pillows, and I'm against your amulets, Wherewith you shall hunt the souls to make them fly. You know what it means to make them fly? It means premature death. And I will tear them from your arms and will let the souls go, even the souls that you make, to make them fly. 
Your kerchiefs also will I tear and deliver my people out of your hand. Thank God that God is going to destroy the power of witchcraft. He wants to destroy it. And anything manipulating you, controlling you, coercing you to not do the will of God is going to be destroyed out of your life tonight. Hallelujah. And they shall be no more in the hand of the hunted, and you shall know that I am the Lord. You know what this scripture indicates? This scripture indicates that God's people are a favorite target for witchcraft. I mean, if he can control a Christian's life, then he's really done his job. I mean, to control somebody that's unsaved is really no job at all. You know why? Because the devil can use them whenever he wants to. He can take an unsaved person and just use them whenever he wants to. The most nicest person in the world. The most gentlest person that you know of that's unsaved can become the most ferocious person against God's will. Because they can be taken at any time and used by the devil. Any time. So don't be shocked when an unbeliever comes up to you and does something that you weren't prepared for. You should be expecting because that's the way unbelievers act. They can be controlled by the devil at any time. It says, through witchcraft, God's people, and I wrote this down in my notes, through witchcraft, God's people can be brought into bondage, they can be saddened or depressed, they can be slain or premature death, they can be turned away and caused to backslide, when really, it shouldn't have been happening at all. You see that? You see what the devil can do? He can depress you when you shouldn't be depressed. He can kill you when you shouldn't have been killed. He can make you backslide when you shouldn't have been backslidden. He can snare your soul. And this is all witchcraft that's at work. Take a look at another verse here. Acts chapter 19, please. Acts chapter 19. Uh, no, not Acts chapter 19. Uh, Exodus chapter 22. Exodus 22. Do you see what, you see what magic is now? Magic is the, the control that the devil has to make something happen that should have never been happened. That is, that is strong. That is strong demonic power that's at work that can cause the early events and circumstances to change because of a demonic force that's at work. That is, that is a powerful force that's at work. Make no, make no mistake about it. Listen to me, people. There's no such thing as an accident. The devil makes it happen. Do you hear me? Accidents happen because there's magic at work. Did you hear me? Yeah. Somebody's doing witchcraft to make it happen. Exodus 22, and look at verse 18. Look at how much God hated it. Who this is in verse 18. Exodus 22 and verse 18. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Under the old covenant, they were destroyed. Now, I don't approve of any witch hunts. Okay? I don't approve of that at all. What God is saying here is that He wants the working of witchcraft to be destroyed. Witchcraft is used, magic is used, even by some Christians. You know how they're used by some Christians? They get on their knees and they start praying about the will of God in your life. When it's not really the will of God at all. That's magic that's at work. Hello. So, so somebody, just, somebody that's out there starts to pray for me. Oh, Lord, get him out of that church. Get him out of that building. You don't belong there. That's magic. That's at work. They actually send a demonic force because it's not God's will. Hello. The devil will use anything he can to control your life. You hear that? He will use anything he can to influence you, to manipulate you, to cause you to do something that you should never have been done, done to begin with. One more verse, look at Deuteronomy chapter 18 because I want to get into this, this sorcery again that deals specifically with jewelry 
and a and occultic, uh, you know, occultic stuff. Number Deuteronomy. I got a book in my office uh, with a testimony of a man by the name of Norman Parrish who worked down in missionary work. And they were building a church, I believe, someplace down in South America. And the pastor that was building the church found that for some reason he just couldn't get a breakthrough. And the people would, ne would never come on time. The offerings would dwindle down to nothing. And the Word of God, every time he would minister the Word of God, it would feel like he was hitting a brick wall. And he couldn't figure out why this was happening for. Till he went to the church Lord in prayer, and the Lord said, there's witchcraft that's at work in your church. And the Lord said to him, I want you to look in your church building and see if you see these things. You'll find them missing. The Lord said to him, look for the clock in your church. He looked for the clock. The clock was missing. He said to the pastor, he said, look for the offering bucket, the offering cabinet. He started to look for the offering cabinet. The offering cabinet was missing. He said, now look for where your Bible is. The Bible was missing. What had done was that in the middle of the night, the witches had come in and had confiscated these things and were actually using these things as points of contact to throw curses against the church. So they would use the clock as a point of contact to stop all the people from getting to church on time. Let me tell you something. We start here at Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Anything that stops you from getting here on time on Sunday morning is witchcraft. That's right. He noticed the offering bucket was missing. They had taken the offering bucket and they had actually cursed the offering bucket and were actually praying over the thing, cursing it, so that the offerings wouldn't come into the church. Then they had taken the Bible and had actually used their own Bible as a source of contact to throw curses against the Bible so this way nothing would take place, no word of God would come forth. If you think that one's great, you've got to hear another one. And it's out of these books. And I strongly suggest that if you're listening, pick up the books by Wynne Worley that did extensive research on witchcraft. He gives another account of some, uh, some island down in the Philipp Philippian F Philippines. Philippines. If I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken. He said and the, whole, the whole island was like, well, like a bunch of zombies. Like nobody had their own minds, their own heads. And what they did was that the cops became curious because these people would look like, they actually looked like zombies. Town clerks, intelligent people, sophisticated people, looked like they were zombies. People that should, should not be acting the way they should be acting. Magic again. And what the cops did was that the cops went into one of these, they found one of these places where they were doing some witchcraft, and what they found was that they actually found the jaw, a jaws of empty jaws with people's names on the empty jaws. And what the witches were doing, they were doing exactly what Ezekiel 13 was. They were hunting the souls of the people and they were capturing them. You know that your soul can be captured. And it says the cops went in there and broke all the jars with the people's names on them. He says when the, all the jars were broken with the people's names on them, the people's minds returned back to normal in the town. 